guys of Southeast Asia and India. We are going to get started with a performance of an Indian dance, a uh, Bollywood Indian dance. For those of you that don't know what Bollywood is, it's an informal term that is used for the Hindi language film industry. The, in India, the Bollywood is the largest film producer in India and one of the largest centers of film production in the world. The name Bollywood comes from the term, or comes from the name Bombay, which is the former name for Mumbai, and Hollywood, which is America's film industry. Today we're going to show you a dance called Aja Nachale, which means come on, let's dance. Basically, that's going to become my vocal cord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say A-E-I-O-U because vowels are the easiest to hear, but the sound won't come from my vocal cord. It's going to come from this piece of bamboo. I'm just going to move my mouth to what I want to say, and as I flick that, that becomes my vocal cord. So if everyone just stays quiet, and you'll hear me say A-E-I-O-U with this piece of bamboo. In many regions in the Philippines, more of the tribal areas, they, practice, they do entire wedding ceremonies speaking through this little piece. Because that becomes the vocal cord. And they also produce music. There's different tones you can make, and all you do is you're moving your tongue around in your mouth. If you notice, if you try to say A, your tongue kind of depresses into your mouth, so that's all you do is, is, is do that. And then as you flick that, that'll become your vocal cord. So I'll play a little bit of, of the different sounds.
And, and again, I, 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 no sounds coming from me, it's all coming from this little piece, and I'm just moving my mouth in, the, in different, different ways. So another thing I want to show you guys from the Philippines is the martial arts style called Eskrima, or stick fighting. These sticks are made out of bamboo or rattan sticks, and can also be made out of hardwood. These guys are going to show you a little bit of demonstration of the fighting style, known as Eskrima. And the point of the fighting, when you use Eskrima sticks, is to get the opponent's stick out of their other hand by attacking their knuckles. And even once he loses a stick, the same fighting style he would learn with the stick, if you notice the, the, the hand motions, that were going back and forth. Those are just simple movements that they're going back and forth. Even after losing the stick, the same motions that he would use with the stick is he can use in a form of martial arts called salat, which would use the hands as your weapons. The same, the same style he would learn with a stick and the hands he can use with what's called a bolo knife, which is a short knife where the blade would come out the other end. Same exact motion. So you can learn one style, but three different weapons. You have the stick, your hands, and a different type of knife. <laughs> Question and answer to test your knowledge. Everyone look at this map, because it's going away now. Someone, raise your hand. We have prizes for answers. Name four countries in Southeast Asia. China is not in Southeast Asia. Malaysia. Vietnam, two. Okay, we'll get one more person. All right, that's good. Good job, give a round of applause. All right, someone tell me, what kind of climate do you think most of Southeast Asia falls within? Temperate is not right. Tropical is correct. Most of Southeast Asia does fall within a tropical, hot and humid all year, year round with plentiful rainfall. Someone tell me, what major river in India is considered most holy to the Hindus? Okay. Yeah, so you're studying it in, in India, so the Ganges River is correct, good job. Now the Ganges River is most holy to the Hindus, uh, but they do have issues with pollution. If you notice in this picture, there's a lot of debris in the water, a lot of rituals, a lot of uh, festivals that require things to be put in the river. Um, so it is an issue where it is becoming polluted, um, even though it is holy to the Hindus. All right, how much of Southeast Asia and India fall? Uh, I'm sorry, with much of Southeast Asia falling within a monsoonal climate, what weather-related issue do you think would affect the region? Reg, let's weather. What would come from the rain? Flooding, perfect. Flooding is a major issue in the area. The entire region falls within that monsoonal area, all of India and Southeast Asia. So flooding is a major issue. With monsoons, that means they do get rain almost year round. All right, can someone tell me what religion is most widely practiced in Southeast Asia? In that corner? Hinduism is not right. Buddhism is not the most in Southeast Asia. Richard? Islam is correct. Islam is the most practiced religion in Southeast Asia. Many people think it is Buddhism because of Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. A lot of the area does, does practice Buddhism. But Indonesia has the largest population in Southeast Asia, and Indonesia practices Islam. A lot of the government is based on Islam, so Islam is the highest, the highest one in Southeast Asia. Now, what religion is most likely widely practiced in India? In the back? Hinduism is correct. Good job. Now with Hinduism, it's not, Hinduism is not the same type of uh, religion as Christianity is. They, they don't, um, it's more of a way of life instead of uh, a religion they practice. Uh, they do still have one main deity, but they have gods and goddesses that, that focus on certain encompassing things in their life. They might have a god for, for business or a god for, you know, for prosperity, depending on, depending on what it is, they still have one main god, but all the lesser gods for different things in their life. It's going to be the third most popular religion behind Christianity and Islam, with about 950 million followers. Some, someone tell me what the approximate range, percentage range of literacy rate is in Southeast Asia. Richard? 50% is pretty low, actually. 70% is still kind of low. 
You very back? That's 68 still low. Richard? 90% still low. Uh, back corner? 99 is a little too high. <laughs> Um, not, we, we can take 97, so it's above 95, it's a, it's a little above 95%, good job. Now with that, the literacy rate being that high in the region, if you notice a lot of things are, are starting to come from that region, with that higher literacy rate, people are able to get higher skilled jobs and, and start to industrialize their areas. Southeast Asia is you know, mainly focused on you know, farming and, and because of the farmland in the region, but because the literacy rate becomes so high, they're able to become more industrialized. Right. What is the predominant form of government in Southeast Asia? Democracy is correct. It's a unitary form of government. Democracy is the main government type in the area, but they also have a parliamentary monarchy. What does monarchy mean? As a king and queen, many of many countries in the region still have kings and queen. We're, we're going to see the Thailand king and queen here shortly, but that's why a lot of the countries still have the parliamentary monarchy in the area as well. All right, which, which country is considered to have the largest democracy? Do what? India is correct. India has the largest democracy in the world. It is based off the English form of government as English, England did occupy India for the longest period of time. All right, and we talked earlier about the literacy rate being high, so the economies were able to become more industrialized. But what else does the region still have to focus on in order to sustain their economy? What? Uh, no, that's not right. Well, that's part of the industrialization that they produce goods and services. So, there's, what else do they still have to to rely on in order to sustain the economy? What kind of natural resources? Good. Agriculture. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the area still has farmland, and so agriculture is a major thing. Also, tourism, as a lot of the area relies on, on tourists to come in, but agriculture is a major portion of what they still have to rely on, even though they are becoming more industrialized. What we're going to go into is uh, some free exploration where you guys will be able to walk around, enjoy the uh, information on the forest, and that's the things we have to see. We also have what's called Filipino tinkling, which many of you might know what, what that is. Try that out, that will be over here. The snacks that we talked about earlier, we will be walking around and let you guys try out the snacks. We also have the option to have your name written in the Thai language on a fan and a head tattoo for a dollar in the corner as well. With the extreme of fighting, there will be an option to do that and they'll show you this way over there. You guys have fun.